Good morning, welcome to E Thursday, wherever you're watching from. Please say hi in the comments so that I can greet you before we get started. It is 10.01 a.m. here in South Africa, Cape Town, South Africa. What a nice cool day we're having after that terrible heat. We've actually had some rain, just a bit of a weather report for you if you're not living in Cape Town. Um, so, so hi in the comments. I've got my phone here and I'll greet you as you come on and then we can get going. Um, we had a really good day. If you were there on Saturday with us at Glorious Days, uh, one day conference for women. We had it out in the northern suburbs. God has provided a really amazing venue for us and amazing venue for us in, uh, in Durbanville area. And I see people are coming on. So if you were there on Saturday um, and you haven't sent me your feedback yet, please do. Um, I've had some nice testimonies coming in of people who got revived. They had a touch from God. They enjoyed the ministry. Um, people were healed, which is always a, a, something God loves to do. It's who he is. He is our healer. So let me see who I can greet this morning. I see Nadine Lawrence from Brisbane is here. Always nice to, to see your name. Jennifer Repanis, Repanis uh, welcome to you all the way from Joburg. Beulah Strachan is here. Welcome to you. Glennis Wolverons from just up the road to me. You are here with me online. Welcome to you. Rodene is here. Nice to see you. And let's see who else is going to join in. Some people disappear when, when I start greeting because I don't think they really want anyone to know that they're watching online for some reason. But um, as you come on, please say hi. And if you are new, tell me where you are watching from. So we are living in amazing days where God is doing something. But what I'm feeling myself is that God is doing something in his people before we're going to see it happen out there. And so there's this sense of God calling us to go deeper, to come higher, uh, to be where He is, to live from the secret place, um, and that He is to be our focus, and, and He's the one who, who we are, you know, we co cooperating with the Spirit of God so that He can do what He wants to do in these days. I'm just trying to move my laptop so that I'm not sitting under the crown like that because that looks a little bit strange. So I just want to move it a little bit. That should be okay. So Debbie Wellman Minter is here. Good morning to you. Yeah, Jennifer Rapanis, you're not an oldie from Gauteng. You are definitely not an oldie. You're one of the remnant. You're one of the people who have stood the test of time. So look at it that way. And Maria Boven from Sweden. So nice to have you. Always nice to have you. Um, so yeah, people are joining in now. Um, so the Tanya van Amsterdam is watching. Um, the the day on Saturday was really. It was a, a Monica day. Talk about the day, Monica day. Welcome to you. Um, the day on Saturday was. I I felt that it was just sort of laying the platform. For what God is going to do with us. He, um, you know, when prophetic people hear something and they declare it ahead of time, and um, and so we were saying things in, in all the speakers, and we had Rona from Dibron, uh, Rona Kisveta, who was our first speaker. I spoke, I did two sessions, I did one on healing, and, and when I did the one on healing um, in the afternoon, I really felt like I was just giving the basics. But you know, and then Rory spoke as well, and Rory's always amazing. He spoke on position for purpose. And so when, um, I'm just trying to keep up with who is arriving. Aretha Joseph, so nice to see you. I'm hoping to see you at Rocklands in June, you and your mom. Um, 
So when prophetic people see something ahead of time, it's because God has done, has deposited something in their spirit, in their hearts, and, and, and prophetic people um, and prophets can, it's almost as if it's tangible, you can feel what God is about to do. And I'm sure all the intercessors watching me now can relate because God reveals something before he does it. And there's a lot of buzz going around, uh, not just on social media. I believe it's something God is doing where he is releasing something fresh. He's getting us ready for a suddenly. And you know, I want to encourage you today. The suddenlies of God, we hear about it, we read about it in the Bible, and suddenly there was the sound of a like a mighty rushing wind. And suddenly... Jesus appeared on the water, and suddenly God did this. Um, I want to say to you, God is preparing us for the suddenlies. And, and when, when we are waiting, and we feel as if there's nothing happening, we're just waiting and waiting and waiting, that's when the suddenlies happen. A suddenly is something that is unexpected. But at the same time, God has shown us things by His Spirit, and, and He's preparing us, and we can't fully understand what it is He's doing in us, but He's saying to, he's saying to us, come deeper, go deeper. I had an amazing dream the other night that, um, that, I know this is something for me, but maybe you can relate to this, is that we, Rory and myself, and all our kids, were we, were, we had to walk up, a kind of, and it's the second dream I've had of walking up something that I thought I wouldn't be able to walk up. And um, in the first dream, um, I knew I I was told to go somewhere, but when I saw the path that I had to walk on, I thought there's no way I'm going to be able to walk up this path without slipping down. And then the person I was walking with said, "Don't worry, you'll be able to get up here. There's something to hold on, and I'm walking with you. Now you don't need an interpretation." to know what that's about. It's come up here. It looks like you're not going to be able to do it, but I'm here with you. We're going to do this together. And then in the dream that I had the other night, it was, um, I was, myself and my whole family, we were, we had to get, it was almost like to a mountain top. It was a high place we had to get to, and they had planned a surprise for me. And when I got up there, um, we were all waiting for this surprise that they thought that I didn't know about, but I knew about. And um, then, we had to go somewhere else, but in order to get to this other place, we had to walk down very steep steps. Now, I don't like heights. And so I remember standing on this edge, and the steps were like not normal steps that you walk down. It was, here's the platform, and the step went like this, like a long step. And here's a small platform just for your foot, like even if you turned your foot on the side, that that's what we were going to stand on. And Rory did this with ease, but to make it even worse, we were stepping into water. These are the dreams I have. This is how God speaks to me. We were stepping into water. Now, if you've heard any of my previous sessions, you know I've been speaking about Ezekiel 47 and how um, the, uh, the water was ankle deep, then knee deep, then waist deep, and then it became too deep that he had to swim. So in this dream, I looked at Rory, and he was just walking down the steps. And I was like treading very carefully because I was stepping into water and I was going on steps that my feet, and I don't have the biggest feet, my feet were hardly fitting on. And Rory just did this with ease and then he disappeared. And then I realized, and all my other kids had already swam, gone ahead of me. And I realized that I was going to reach a point in my taking my steps where I was going to be out of my depth and I was going to have to swim. I'm telling you, in my dream, I swam and I got through the water. And you know what God's saying. <laughs> you're feeling as if all you're doing is waiting. Somebody needs to hear this today. Otherwise, I wouldn't have shared this dream so soon. I'm still churning on this thing, chewing on it. Um, you feel as if all you're doing is waiting and waiting and waiting. Did you see my bite-sized video? I think it was Monday about waiting. Oh, it wasn't a bite-sized video. I went online for 11 minutes. Somebody has been waiting and waiting, and I believe it's all of us. We're waiting and waiting, and we hear about the suddenlies, and we hear about the glorious things God is going to do, but all we seem to be doing is waiting and waiting, or maybe walking uphill or taking steps into an area that you're going to, you know you're going to be out of your depth. And God is needing us to be out of our depth. 
so that we will be led by him. We will have, it's all the, the experience you've had before, the encounters you've had before, the gifts that you know you have that still operate, the way you hear from God, it's all still happening. But you know that there's a work that God is doing on the inside of you and he's saying, come deeper with me. And so um, when it's like the knowledge that you, that you have is not enough anymore. The, you can read books, you can listen to somebody else's teaching, you can do all kinds of things, but you know now it's a season of you and God. And he's getting you to the place where you will say, okay, I'm going to co-labor with you now because this is the only way it's going to be done. And I believe the glorious days that we're moving into are going to require more and more of us co-laboring with the Holy Spirit. And then he adds that weighty anointing. That's why he does it. It's not to punish us or we're not good enough. It's because he sees the potential. He sees we are becoming more like Jesus and then he, he does a work in us, and then we have the capacity to carry this weighty anointing. So that whatever we've done before, the, the, the praying, the intercession, the warfare, the prophesying, the praying for people, the ministering the word, whatever it is, the ministry that you have inside of you, then we carry a weighty anointing. And it's God going before us to, to make the crooked places straight. It's God going before us to impact the lives of other people where we've been doing it in our gift before, which is good, and, and God uses that. But now he wants to add a weighty anointing so he can reveal his glory more and more through his people. So that was just my, my bonus for this morning. Um, you know, the enemy does not want you to walk in authority. The enemy wants you to give up and sit back and say, I don't have any revelation. It's like, you look at all the stuff. I have said, I said this to Rory. I said, I feel like I'm preaching and I'm just spitting out. I've said this many times and he says this to me and other people in ministry say the same thing. I feel like I'm just spitting out bits of dry information. I want the anointing. And then God hears us and he says, okay. The answer to that is not, here you go, like a magic wand. It's come to me. It's, you know, authority and revelation come as we allow God to do this work in us and to take us deeper. And there's nothing you can do to help God, to make it go quicker, to change your season. You just learn to cooperate with God. Isn't that amazing? And, and I remember going to bed one night after having a day of moaning and being frustrated and saying, where is this anointing? Where are the miracles? And, and I thought, I, I recognize the season that, I, that we go through. You should be able to recognize the seasons, whether you're in a time of waiting, a time of the flow and the breakthrough and all the things happening on the outside. But when you're in the season of waiting, like, you, if you've ever been pregnant, you carry this baby and then you get into bed at night and you dream. I remember Rory and myself used to talk about what is this child going to sound like when it starts talking? What is this child going to look like? Who is he or she going to look like? It's the same with what God has put inside of you, that anointing, that gifting, that calling, the purpose, the revelation, whatever he's put inside of you. I, I remember getting into bed um, one night, and I was just so overwhelmed. It was, was, um, it's, it's very humbling to understand that God will take you and I, and he will say, this is the season that I've chosen to do a deeper work in you because I see that you're willing to yield, that you're willing to work with me. You're willing to wait. You're not one of those people who give up all the time. You're willing to, to let me do what needs to be done because I see something in you and I want to, want to take you somewhere. And, it, and I just felt this overwhelming sense that, gee, God's got his eye on me. <laughs> and, and we just say, okay, God, here I am. And it's a good season to be in. So, in the natural, when it seems as if everything opposite is happening to what God has said to you, all your dreams, all the, the things you've written down in your notebooks, and so you were so excited about it, and then suddenly it seems as if everything opposite is happening, and, and the devil's going to make you think, oh, you've done something wrong, you, you, um, hi, Fontini, and I see some other people have arrived, You've done something wrong and you, you know, God think, doesn't think you're good enough anymore. He's found somebody else. You missed him somewhere, so he chose someone else. You know, God doesn't play chess with his people. Like, you know, you don't fit here, so I'll take you and put you here. 
And he also doesn't play noughts and crosses, you know. Let's put Mona here, let's put uh, Michelle here, and let's try Debbie here. No, it doesn't work. Let's shuffle them around again. God knows exactly what he's doing with your purpose, your calling, your life. And so when we put our, our lives in his hands, and we're willing to wait, and maybe let him do the surgery that he needs to be done in our attitudes and in our feeling of insecurity and competing, and we haven't reached a place of being content, just pleasing him. <laughs> not about pleasing the people, it's not about all the likes and the followers and how many meetings you're getting and how many you, you have done. It's just about being willing to sit with him. And so he becomes the, your place of refuge. It's that Psalm 91. I've actually got my Bible open on Psalm 91. But I'm saying all of this to you now. Um, you know, it's not about reproducing what you know to do. Let's do it again. It's like a production line. Oh, I can prophesy to 20 people. I'm going to prophesy to 30 people today. I'm going to have 10 meetings this month. Let's increase the meetings. Let's do this. Let's do that. That's reproducing what you know to do. This is a time where God wants, to, wants us to be refreshed, to be, um, you know, to be partnering with His ways. To, so we're not doing it in the natural. We're partnering with the supernatural ways of, of God, the supernatural ways of the kingdom, so He can add that weighty anointing. Um, so He wants us to be refreshed and restored. It's when the anointing plus the gift uh, begins to operate. Thank you, Rory. My anointed husband brought me a cup of tea. How amazing is that? That's like God adding the weighty anointing. <laughs> mm. So, so let me just see what I've written. I said Psalm 91, and I feel it's important to look at it. We, I mean, we can read this and quote this, but this is such an important word in the season. This, and the heading in my Bible is the safety of abiding in the presence of God. We, we need to be learning how to dwell, how to, that's what abide means. The presence of God is where we want to, our habitation to be, because He wants to come and inhabit our lives. And he who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. And the shadow of the Almighty, I didn't speak about this on Saturday, by the way. Um, I'm just starting off with some fresh things that I feel God gave me. Um, the shadow of the Almighty is the influence of God. That is one of the most important place, the things to learn when we dwell in that intimate place. You know the secret place is, today is your life hidden in Christ. That's the secret place. It's not some secret place that you find that nobody else knows about. It's living out of your life is hidden in Christ. Our intimate relationship, fellowship with God. Um, so the shadow of the Almighty is the influence, the sustenance. If you do not learn to dwell in that intimate, shelter, secret place where God is your refuge, God is your all, it's not who likes you, who approves of you, who doesn't, whatever else is going on there. If you don't learn to live out of that secret place, you won't be sustained for very long. I'm actually working on a message about. Um, I'm working on a message about um, coming out of spiritual paralysis. I think I might do that. I'll probably do that sometime soon. The devil gets us to a place where para where we are paralyzed spiritually, or he wants us to think we are, and God wants us out of that place. And one of those ways is to keep make sure that our sustenance comes from God alone. Your sustenance, you know your sustenance is what feeds you, what keeps you strengthened, what, is, what establishes you in your walk, cannot come from people. It cannot come from all the things you've done or that you know you can do. Um, you, you build yourself up. You, you read the stuff. You listen to teachings. It's not just you and God in a cave alone. But your sustenance, the primary source of your sustenance, is the presence of God. It's time spent with God. And, and in this season, in this time, when we're about to see the suddenlies, when we're about to see the glory of God, when we're about to see a tsunami of a move of God, our sustenance has to be God. Because the opposition is going to be just as, as 
What's the word I can use? Opposing. There's going to be opposition. But when your sustenance is in God, and the threats come from Jezebel to say, I'm going to take you out. You may as well stay here in the wilderness. Your sustenance is God. And He wants to feed you, restore you, refresh you, build you up today. Not when the thing happens, today. Um, it also means provision. He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the provision of God. He's going to provide. He wants to provide what you need in the season, even if you're just waiting. Even if you feel that you're all alone out there, there's nothing happening. Debbie Minter, are you still here? Won't you give me a thumbs up, please, so that I can see that you are still here? Debbie Wellman Minter. Now, I know I've got to wait a little while. Um, Debbie Wellman Minter. I'll say it anyway, and hopefully Debbie will give me a thumbs up. Um, not, uh, I need a thumbs up in the comment, Debbie, so that I can, because on my phone I can't see. Um, uh, who, are you here? Okay, Debbie, I feel, when I said that now, um, Psalm 91, the law, uh, the sustenance means provision. I know you've had a lot of words before about the impact that you're going to make out there in the marketplace, in the, in the secular thing, um, that there's an impact. But there's a provision that God has for you. And I see, it's almost like it's, it's sitting above your head. It's like hanging over your head. And I'm not, it'll be nice if it's lots of money. You receive that if you're praying for money. But I feel God saying to you, because of your willingness to wait, because of your willingness to dig in, to press in for the presence of God, there's such a hunger in you that God's going to release a provision of things that you don't even know that you need right now. And, and the provision is an anointing. It's, it's a, a weightiness in the area of the anointing to make an impact where he's called you to be in the season. And so you feel as if you've reached the end of yourself. Like there's no, you feel as if you just come to the end of yourself. You say, God, only you can do this thing. And God's saying he's releasing provision and it's his presence it's revelation out of the word. He's going to speak to you in dreams. And he's revving up your prophetic engine at this time. He's revving up your prophetic motor. And you're going to be hearing clearer. And you've been saying to God, God, I need to see sharper. I need to hear with more. I need to hear. And God's saying, just be in this waiting mode because he's releasing provision to you because you have been willing to wait in the secret place. Okay, Debbie Minter, that's for you. So, I, I haven't even gone to my message yet today, but it's okay. We'll just do what, what the Holy Spirit wants you to hear. Um, the, he, he who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the influence, the sustenance, the provision, the protection of the Almighty. We all need the protection. And it's not because we're running away from the devil. It's because God protects His purpose God protects and watches over every word that he has spoken to you. He watches over his word to perform it. So when, when we're out there running, making it happen because God said, then we out of that under the shelter of the Almighty, then we're doing our own thing. But if we stay, if we live from this place of, I'm only doing it because God said, I'm here, I want to please God. Um, I'm going to... Um, I'm going to wait on God. And then we stay in this place of protection because God has his, he has his eye on you, even if you step out of his time. That's his grace. But we want to live in the fullness of the shadow of the Almighty in the season. So it's protection. It means privilege and benefits. You know, you have benefits as a believer. The benefits of living in the secret place of the Most High. Healing, provision, deliverance, freedom, love, joy, grace. All of those things, these are what we experience when we live under the shadow of the Almighty, even when we feel that, that we, all we're doing is waiting, even when we feel frustrated because we know He's shown us some things, He's done some things and we're ready to go, but it's like the door's closed and here I am waiting. Um, but this is a time of double. I'm telling you, it's a time of double, not just because it's the year 2022. God God, I don't think God really, uh, okay, he speaks in numbers, he does, but 
God wants to give us double. I'm not saying why or, or why not. So, God wants to give you double. So, if you live by Rory, please leave the door. Thank you. See you later. You know, we, we know we record from home. We, we stream from home. So, if I say bye to my husband and he brings me tea, it doesn't matter, does it? God, God doesn't mind being interrupted. Um, so, when we are prepared to dwell in that place, without running ahead of God, without saying, God, where are the miracles? We have an expectation for that, yes. But without allowing ourselves to, to want to give up and to run away and hide and feel sorry for ourselves, when we dwell in that Psalm 91 place, all of those things are there. We walk in the benefit. And then, even when things are not go, going well, even when when it seems as if God hasn't answered your prayer. Even when you're still trusting God for provision today, because the petrol price has gone up, I think it went up, you still, the benefit, the privilege is, I still have joy. I still have peace that even I can't understand. <laughs> um, but because, that's one of the benefits, because you've chosen to make God your secret place. So important. So let me see what I have here. Um, the pause button has been hit in, has been hit in some of our lives. The pause button, you know, you're watching a movie and someone knocks at the door and you've got to hit the pause button. And it's at the best part of the movie. It's a love scene and, and the guy's just turned up to say, will you marry me? And someone knocks at the door. You know those, those if you watch soapies. I don't. My mother does. So I know all about it. Um, and then the pause button gets hit and you think, but God, I was just doing so well. I was... I was prepared for revival. Uh, you've been speaking to me. You've been, you know, I get prophecies everywhere I go. I'm doing all my homework. I'm confessing the word. I'm preaching the word in season and out of season. And then the pause button gets hit from by heaven, not the devil. And it's because God says there's more for you. Um, a while ago, I remember, you know, some of you have heard Rory's stories about how I was running around, not running around, I was flying around doing women's conferences and ministering in churches for a long time. And Rory was sitting at home. And at first it became frustrating for him. And it was, it was something he really had to work through with God. He never once said to me, I don't think it's fair that you get invited and I'm not. He fully supported me. He prayed for me. He drove me to the airport, let me go for a weekend to go somewhere to go and minister, and he'd pick me up at the airport again, and he, he was my biggest cheerleader, and he'd pray for me and support me. But I knew how difficult it would have been for him, because he's called, we're called together, but he wasn't getting invitations. And this went on for about three years. Um, and then, one day God spoke to him, and he was prepared to wait. He didn't want to make anything happen. Um, that's when I am grateful for a husband who doesn't want to run and make things happen. He is prepared to wait on God, even if it's going to take him five years, even longer. Now even longer, because of what God said. And then God spoke to him and gave him a scripture. And he's at the place where if he never gets invited anywhere, it doesn't matter. And he's still going to preach to 10 people or 50 people or however many people. He's, going to, he's ready to preach the word in season and out of season. And so I've learned watching him what, it's, what it is to be consistent. And then when I have my moans, I've got my own story. When I have my moans and I sit with God and I cry and I say, God, I feel as if I can't hear your voice anymore. I, I'm reading the Bible and I can't get anything out of it. I don't want, you know, if you're in ministry, you will know what I'm talking about now. When you're in ministry, you spend time with God because it's what you're called to do um, to get messages to speak, to, to give to other people like I'm doing now. But your ministry only flows out of what God has done in your life and what he said to you. If it's not what he said to you, it's going to be a lot of information that people will say, oh, wow, that's amazing. But if it's just information, there's no anointing on it to bring change in the hearer's lives. And the only way it gets anointing, anointed is if you live the word that God said to you, especially if you're a prophet or a prophetic person, 
You live the word that God wants to release to his people. There's a script, in the Old Testament, you'll see the burden of the word of the Lord came to Ezekiel, Isaiah, whoever, Jeremiah, because God released his heart to the prophet so they could become the prophet. And then the um, God begins to speak. So, so many times I would cry with God and I'd say, God, but it feels like I'm in ministry, I'm preparing, I'm doing things. It's easy to preach your word, but what about me? And then God says, just wait. The pause button's been hit. Just wait, because I'm doing a deeper work in you. I'm calling you to come deeper with me. I don't want to speak too much about going deeper with God, because that's a whole message on its own. Uh, I believe if you've seen my adverts, um, before I say this, I want to say, in the season when God is calling you to go deeper, and I know it's not just me, when he's calling you to go deeper, he, he wants you to, to know the difference between success and significance. You can be successful in ministry, and that is measured, or in your life as a believer. You can be successful, and that is measured by how much you do, what you've done, all the great teachings you can all haul out, and you can do something. But you're significant when you become the message God has called you to become. And we all have a message that God wants to preach through our lives so that makes you significant in the hand of God so don't be looking for success by doing a whole lot of stuff and working hard be looking to be significant because God's hand is on your life and you are the message okay so um uh if you have seen I'm speaking about the ladies weekend away in June I'm really advertising this because we are doing it we are going to do this in June no more postponements the world is opening up we are going to have our Women's Weekend away in June. And the theme is it's going to be an equipping weekend. It's going to, no haphazard, this is the word of the Lord, this and this. It's God said an equipping weekend with the word of the Lord, obviously. You're going to be equipped in the area of prophecy and prophetic ministry, healing ministry, um, and prayer and intercession and warfare. We're going to focus on those areas and people are going to be equipped because I really believe 2022 is the year of double, and we are going to overcome because God is with us, and we're going to take some ground back from the enemy, and we are going to walk in authority, and we're going to see the significant hand of God on our lives because we're people who've learned to yield. This is what Glorious Days is all about. Um, so, okay, let me get into some of the things that I shared on Saturday. Because it's already 10.33. So the enemy is going to tell you, I want to say to you, the enemy is going to tell you when you're in a time of waiting, and here's God reaching out his hand saying, come deeper with me, come higher with me, spend time with me. What a privilege. But the enemy is going to say to you, you're just like a dry tree in the wilderness. You've got nothing to give. You've got nowhere to go. Nobody's calling you, but God's calling you. Remember that God is always calling you. So, Psalm 44, verse 5 in the Passion Translation. Through your glorious name and your awesome power, we can push through to any victory and defeat every enemy. Okay, the Passion Translation. Through God's glorious name and His awesome power. We know this. It's not our own strength that, that helps us push through to any victory. It's not our own strength that defeats the enemy. It's his glorious name and his awesome power. That was my scripture, my, found, my foundational scripture for what I spoke about on Saturday. And so I'm going to give you um, some of the points that I spoke about. Um, and I spoke about living in an atmosphere of faith. Because when we look at glorious days... If you think about what's going on in the world around us, where's the atmosphere of faith? The, in, the world cannot have an atmosphere of faith. The world lives in an atmosphere of fear, anxiety. It's just going to get worse. Uh, we have no hope. This is The world is conditioned to live like this. Why do you think when you watch the news, there's ne hardly ever, uh, maybe 1% every six months, you'll get good news. It's hardly ever good news is always the bad and what how it's going to get worse. That's how the world is programmed, to live in fear. But in the kingdom, we live by faith. 
And we need to know that God is cheering us on. He doesn't always want to discipline his people. And he, he knows how to, the Holy Spirit knows how to sort you out when you need to be sorted out in grace and kindness and love. Um, because we want to yield to the Spirit of God. So God doesn't have to beat us up to teach us a lesson. But he's always cheering us on. He always sees the potential. He always sees the purpose in our lives. And he's always cheering us on, even when it seems as if he's totally quiet. He's always cheering his people on. So I woke up on Saturday morning with a... Um, I'm just going to give you this very quickly because this also fits into my other teaching about spiritual paralysis. I woke up with this phrase going through my head on Saturday morning, hold the line. And I thought of that song that was in the 1970s, I think it was the 1970s, maybe early 80s, Hold the Line by Toto. And so what I did was, the band Toto, I, what I did was I went onto Google to say what is, what is the meaning of that term, hold the line. And of course it means to keep a phone line open. When someone phones and you've got to answer the door, say hold the line. Uh, in the days of landline, hold the line. It also means in football, soccer, to prevent the opponents from taking the ball forward so the team will hold the line. But this is the one that's important for you and I today. To hold the line, speaking about soldiers, means to keep formation as when under fire. Remember, to keep formation as when under fire. Now, can you imagine if you're in a battle and you're all in formation, um, and there's an enemy's army coming towards you and you suddenly get fearful and you break rank and you run away you're going to lose ground and the whole army the battle line army line the battle line is going to lose some ground and and the enemy will be able to get through that area where somebody has got out of formation and so maybe you haven't realized this yet but we've been under fire. The body of Christ has been under a tremendous amount of fire in the, in, just in this past while. There's a lot of warfare. There's a lot of, uh, there are a lot of darts coming from the enemies. There are arrows um, coming from the enemy's camp to try and take you out, to get you to, I said to you earlier, the devil does not want you to walk in authority. The devil wants you to give up and live in fear. The devil wants you to think God is not your provider. And if you only arrived later, because I see some people did, go back to the beginning and hear what, what I started out by saying. The whole thing about the shadow of the Almighty. God is faithful. God is with us. God is Jesus is the commander of the armies of the Lord. Jesus is with us. God is holding our hand. He's not going to let us down. And the devil wants you to always be looking at you are under fire. You're in God's army and you're under fire. But you know when we are under fire, remember it says in Psalm 91, if you abide under the shadow, one of those things is protection and provision. God provides, He is our shelter. God provides the strategies. He provides the, the answers, the solutions, the way through, the way out. He's with us and he, we're not going to be overtaken or taken out by the enemy's camp. We need to remember that. So when God said, hold the line, He's saying, don't give up now. Don't slack off. Don't think that because you're in waiting mode for so long, I've forgotten about you. I'm watching you. I'm with you. I'm going to be faithful to fulfill the word that I promised you I would do. And part of that is your purpose now in the kingdom of God. We're in an army. We are soldiers in an army. But our strength comes from dwelling in the secret place. Our strength comes from knowing that we, our power comes from rest in God, not everything we can do. Remember, I'm going to read this to you again. What did I say to you? Um, it's not reproducing what you know to do, but, in, but it is allowing God to refresh us and restore us. Then it becomes the anointing plus your gifting instead of your gifting alone. There's a grace on us at this time. There's a grace on every single one of us. To say, God, I'm here. I'm waiting in your presence. I, um, I know um, you are. I'm being transformed. I'm being renewed. I'm being refreshed. I'm going to be more like Jesus at the end of this season. 
and it's going to be the anointing that comes from heaven plus the gift that you gave me and not just the gift alone. If you have a prophetic ministry, you will understand this. There are many times where I've gone and I've done a meeting and, and I get up and um, I preach the word and it's amazing and some people get healed because as you know by now, I really believe my faith is in God for healing and miracles. And that happens. And then I start prophesying to people and the words, people cry or they laugh or they fall on the floor and it's all amazing. But I leave the meeting knowing on the inside, no, there's more than this. There was a song we sang decades ago, there must be more than this. And the whole church was poised at this place where we had become dry. And we were saying, there must be more than this. I can't remember who, who wrote that song, but I'm feeling this is it at the moment. But it's not there must be more than this out of frustration. It's we know there's more than this. We're ready for the suddenlies. This is where we are at. I'm so excited about the season we are in because God wants to release fresh anointing, powerful anointing. He wants to give you keys so you can walk in authority and revelation in the season. So don't miss out. This word today is to encourage you that if you are sitting all alone, crying at home, feeling sorry for yourself because you can't see anything happen, God is busy with you. Join the club. Just get to the place where you say, God, I'm going to abide in under the shadow of the Almighty. Uh, the other uh, important scripture to me at the moment is Isaiah 40, those who wait on the Lord. You would have heard me speak about that the other day. So, um, I'm skipping quite a few of the things that I spoke about on Saturday. Um, 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 okay, I'm speaking to you about living in an atmosphere of faith. And one of the things that happens when we live in an atmosphere of faith, when we feel we're in a drought, when we feel we are totally depleted spiritually, we can't connect with God, we can't hear from God, there's this sense of spiritual frustration, it's agitation, because you know, God, God, you need to do something. That feeling, when we're in this place, and there's still an atmosphere of faith because even though we feel we've given up, the Holy Spirit comes and taps us on the shoulder and says, you're in a good place. This is happening because God loves you, because God's about to bring you into increase. You know in Isaiah 54, it says, break forth into singing and cry aloud. Break forth into singing. If you feel barren, if you feel totally barren, Isaiah 54, sing, O barren, you have not born... If you feel totally barren, it's not enough just to sing and go, hallelujah, God's going to come through. It says, break forth into singing and cry aloud. And it's not talking about cry aloud because you're so frustrated. Oh God, where are you? You've forgotten me. Cry aloud because the only thing that's going to bring you out of this sense of barrenness is to break forth into something you've never done before. God, I need you. God, I need this anointing I've heard about. God, I need the suddenlies. I need to know that I'm dwelling in the secret place of the Almighty, and this is what you say to me. I'll post this up at the end of this, the meaning of the word shadow, in case some of you missed it. This is what you're saying to me. I cry aloud, God. Maybe you're alone at home today going, after this, don't leave me now. We're almost done. Um, and I'm, I'm only starting in my message that I spoke about on Saturday. Um, I rather just felt that the, I must do what the Holy Spirit wants me to do today. So um, maybe go and sit on your couch. Nobody's going to hear you. Close the windows if you live in a flat or you have neighbors too close to you. And cry aloud and say, God, the, this is what your word says. The glory, the sustenance, the provision. Cry aloud. Instead of walking around like a victim and, and, and crying and feeling sorry for yourself. And then we begin to whimper. Then we begin to worry. You know, um, Worry is a big thing these days. We are meant to meditate on what the Word says instead of meditating on what hasn't happened yet. So when we cry aloud, we say, God, I believe you. I feel frustrated, but I believe that when I dwell in the secret place of the Most High, you're going to sustain me. You're going to change my, me on the inside, and then my circumstances follow afterwards. This is where we are. So it's important to cry aloud. Not cry aloud and cry so that everybody hears you crying and they feel sorry for you, and then they put money in your bank account, and then they come and help you. Cry aloud to God. That's how we get into increase. We have to do the breaking forth. 
And it's time to break forth out of the situations that have kept you limited, feeling like a victim, feeling that nothing is going to change, feeling that you'd rather stay in the wilderness under that broom tree, and God's saying, cry aloud, okay? So, one of the things that's going to happen when we do this is we choose life. Because as soon as you step out of the victim mentality and out of the place of limitation where you can't see anything happen, you choose, you choose something else and you choose life. Deuteronomy 30, 19 says, I call heaven and earth as witnesses today against you, that I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing, Therefore, choose life that both you and your descendants may live. Choose life. It says, therefore, choose life. It's, um, it's not a, a suggestion here. God says, there's this way or this way. Now, take this one. It's like the red pill or the blue pill. You know, the matrix. Take this one. But it's, God's saying, he says, these are the choices, but I want you to choose this one. When we choose life, we're not just choosing the life of God and it's all nice and it's a bed of roses. When we choose life and we, we make a choice between where you are now, where, maybe where you are now, sitting in the wilderness saying, it's, I'm not going to get out of here, and you choose God's way, something's going to happen. It's a choice we make. When we choose life, we're choosing God's way. We're choosing to allow God to dream His dreams through our lives. And God's dream... For his church isn't found in Matthew chapter 6. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So when we choose life, we say, God, I can't see it yet, but this is my choice. Today I choose life. I'm not choosing the way of cursing. I'm not choosing death. And it's not like you're going to die and go to heaven. It's the enemy's ways of lead us to death and destruction. God's ways lead us to life, increase, abundance. John 10.10, 10, God's ways lead us that way. So when we choose this and we say, God, I'm choosing this, then we choose the, to, for God to allow his dreams to happen through our lives. His kingdom come, his will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And it's everything opposite to what the devil wants to do here on earth. And we become people who live in an atmosphere of faith, because it's all on the inside. Stop looking at what you can't see yet on the outside. Stop looking at the promises you have that haven't come to pass. Start choosing God's way today. Then you walk in Psalm 91. Um, another thing that happens is great breakthroughs happen in an atmosphere of faith. And we all need this now. We all need to be surrounded by an atmosphere of faith. And it's going to happen when we dwell in the secret place of the Most High. When we're still waiting for the miracles, but we believe this is suddenly coming. And you know, every single person who got a miracle, they maybe you went to a, an evangelistic meeting back in the 1970s or 1980s, and this great evangelist flew in from America, and you saw people get their miracles. They never expected to go to that meeting and get the miracle. Maybe they told themselves, I've got the faith. It was a suddenly that brought their miracle to them. Get ready for the suddenlies. I want to tell you, get ready for the suddenlies. Um, so there are great breakthroughs that are going to happen when we begin to see that we are already living in a ap potential atmosphere of faith. Jesus is here. We have his word. We have the spirit of God leading us, guiding us, equipping us. Um, we have all the gifts in operation in the body of Christ. Everything is set up. For an atmosphere of faith. And then we're going to see great breakthroughs. How many of you today need a great breakthrough in some area? And I read that scripture through your glorious name and your awesome power. We can push through to any victory and defeat every enemy. That speaks to me of great breakthroughs. Okay, um, There's an expectation that, ha that comes in an atmosphere of faith. A gr uh, an atmosphere. Uh, Great expectation. You know when you're in a meeting and you, there's a tangible presence of God, there's an expectation that anything can happen. When last have you felt that? This is something God wants to release to his people. Why do you think the devil's trying to keep you so downcast, so discouraged, so depressed? Maybe not all of you. I know Fontini's not downcast, discouraged, or depressed. She's all ready for anything God's about to give. 
And um, but there's an expectation that that happens. Expectation is creating a space for God to come and fill. It's a capacity we have in our spirit, in our heart, in our lives. It's a capacity we have, even though we can't see what we're asking for. We have this excitement, this expectation. We're sitting on the edge of our seats. Because we've chosen life, we've connected with the ways of God, we're living in the secret place of the Most High, under the shadow of the Almighty. This is our dwelling place, and there's an expectation. What's going to happen next? And it's going to be good. I'm not only expecting more bad news, the devil to do something. It's an expectation that we're going to see God move. He's already stirring the waters to, to, so that we would have an expectation Without an expectation, he won't, there's nothing he can do. He needs our expectation. Enlarge the place of your tent. Um, expectation is not believing in fairy tales or fairy tale endings. Expectation is taking your promise and your purpose and giving God something to work with. And God says, don't hold back. Expect to see his goodness. That's what expectation is. We're gonna, we, we are going to see God do some amazing things. You watching me here today are going to experience the sustenance, the provision, the, the privileges, the influence of God as you stay in Psalm 91. And so when we have an expectation, it's like when the clouds, the rain clouds are gathering outside and you go outside and you know you can smell the rain in the air. You can feel the temperature change. It's the same thing in the spiritual realm. So when we feel that in the natural, there's an expectation. And we behave according to our expectations. If you know there's a big rain coming, you pack away, you get your washing off the line, you pack away your garden furniture that you don't want to get wet, and you get ready for the rain. And I believe God's saying the same. That's how we have an expectation. We get ready. If you call to ministry and you feel that you can't, you're not getting anything, your messages are all boring and dry, keep on. Be consistent. Get ready for the suddenness to come. Do what you've been given to do. Don't sit back and stop and say, I'm going to wait for God to show up. Carry on doing. That's what consistency is about. Carry on doing what you know to do and let God come and refresh you and recharge you and reinvigorate you and do whatever he does, but have an expectation. The devil wants you to give up and God says, don't hold back. I'm almost finished here. In an atmosphere of faith, people are activated and released into their callings and their giftings and their ministries. Um, in the kingdom, when it comes to the body of Christ, we all have a ministry. We all have the ministry of reconciliation. Take the gospel out there. Lay hands on the sick. We're all called to do that. The Great Commission. And so in an atmosphere of faith, there's no more, oh, I just feel dry. There's something that's awakened in you. When faith happens, maybe today God is using what I'm saying to awaken something in you. And that's this, the, the gifts are beginning to operate. You're beginning to hear again. You're beginning to see more again. And people are going to be activated and released into their ministry with the presence and the anointing of God to go out there and do what the goods, do the work of the ministry. So you get unstuck. That's what happens. You become unstuck. And a lot of people have been in a place of stuck, being stuck. And God is, wants, to, wants to unstuck his people when we dwell in the secret place of the Most High. I said to you, I'm going to post the meanings of that word, the shadow. Straight after this, I will post something up. And here's the last thing. That's, no, no, I think I've got two more. Great conviction is going to come on those in darkness. Um in an atmosphere of faith, we cannot have an atmosphere of faith, the suddenness of God, the presence of God, people stepping out in the anointing, people crying aloud to God, people breaking forth. We cannot have all of this happening without it impacting those who are in darkness. So you need to expect, if you're praying for people at home who are unsaved, if you're praying for people who've been hard-hearted for decades, and you seem as if you can't see any change, be encouraged, there's great conviction on those who are in darkness. When we walk in the glory and people see the glory, Isaiah 60 says, Behold, darkness shall cover the earth, it's verse 2, and deep darkness the people. But the Lord will arise over you, and his glory will be seen upon you. 
The Gentiles shall come to your light and kings to the brightness of your rising. So people out there are going to see the glory of God on your life. You think you don't have authority. You think God isn't hearing your prayers. You think you don't have keys and, and revelation. You're just a dry tree in the wilderness. And people can't even see you anymore. You feel invisible. Somebody watching me here feels absolutely invisible to people and to God. And God says, His glory will be seen upon you. Be encouraged with that. There's conviction on people already without us doing anything. We show up where we need to be and there's conviction that comes because we carry the glory of God. And the scripture says, deep darkness, the people... But the Lord will arise over you and his glory will be seen upon you. You don't have to have a microphone in your hand for the glory to be seen upon you. You don't have to be standing up in the front of the church prophesying in old King James for the glory to be seen upon you. You need to be living in the secret place of the Most High and doing your everyday thing out there and allowing God to be your sustenance, your influence, your provider, your healer. And the glory of God will be seen upon you. Isn't that encouraging? I've got one more. I've got... Four minutes to go, and then we're out of time. Um, I've got one more. I'm not going to get speak to you about healing this morning because that's too long. I did a separate section on healing. In an atmosphere of faith, we become people who declare the word. Listen to this scripture. They shall speak of the glory of your kingdom and talk of your power to make known to the sons of men his mighty acts and the glorious majesty of his kingdom. Isn't that a nice scripture? Psalm 145, verse 11 and 12. What are we speaking of today? The glory of his kingdom, his power, to make known to the sons of men his mighty acts and the glorious majesty of his kingdom. Let's not be like Gideon. When he had his visitation from God, he said, where are the miracles our fathers have told us about? What's going on here? Who am I? I'm the weakest in my family. Why would God choose me? Let's not be saying those things. Say them to yourself. But when you get together with believers, speak of the glory of his kingdom. Talk of his power. You've seen his power before. You've seen his glory before. You've read about it. Maybe you haven't seen it. You've read about it in the scriptures. You've heard other people's testimonies. That's the glory of his kingdom. That's his kingdom manifesting around our lives in every detail. Talk about those things. And why? To make known to the sons of men his mighty acts and the glorious majesty of his kingdom. I love that scripture. Psalm 145, 11 and 12. And I think it is uh, New King James Version. It might be all the Passion Translation. And there's one, one last thing I want to add. And I did speak about this before. In an atmosphere of faith, there's going to be a lot of restoration. Restoration of things you feel you lost. Restoration of uh, vision, of hope, of health, provision, all of these things. In an atmosphere of faith, when, when we begin to see the suddenlies, uh, the suddenlies will follow the atmosphere of faith. Right now, you and I choose life. We choose God's ways. And already we have the atmosphere of faith. Restoration is going to happen. And here's my, my ending scripture. To restore means to return something or someone to a former position or condition. So maybe you started out this last year or even this year. And you had the promises of God and you were enthusiastic about it. And a month has gone by and suddenly you feel as if you've lost it all because the pause button has been hit. And... Um, and you, you don't know what's going on. God is busy restoring. He's re but he's not just restoring you to where you were before. He's restoring you to a better condition than you were before. Because he's adding to you. He's bringing increase and abundance. He's adding things to you. So you will be restored to better than you were before. Here's the scripture. Psalm 45, 10 and 11. The Passion Translation. Now listen, daughter. Pay attention and forget about your past. Put behind you every attachment to the familiar, even those who once were close to you. For your royal bridegroom is ravished by your beautiful brightness. Isn't that amazing? That was my last scripture. I'm not going to add any more to that. 
the healing stuff will have to wait for I'll do a bite-sized thing on the healing or I'll add it in this new teaching that I'm working on but um, I pray you you were encouraged today I just want to see who I haven't greeted because it's very important you gave up an hour of your day to be with me and I really appreciate that um, I said hello to Maria Bovin, Jennifer Apanis, Debbie Minter, Monica Day, Aretha Joseph, Elizabeth Welsh, always good to see you, Elizabeth Welsh, Mona Smith is here, Yandi and Kwasi, we miss you Yandi, your beautiful face, your shiny happy face, Colleen Swartz, I missed you ladies on Saturday, Colleen and Jenny and your group of ladies, Maureen Schumann is watching, welcome to you, uh, Charlene Ainsley, welcome to you. I don't remember seeing your name before. Uh, now, don't leave, please. <laughs> Cornelia Reba, nice to have you. Um, Lefuno is here. Mabija Rasmussen, nice to have you, Lefuno. Michelle Galdenais, always good to see you. Rosemary Sutton Hubert, nice to see you. Uh, Rosemary, I think we are going to be seeing you in PE. I think, well, we are going to be in PE. I'm just thinking, not sure if you will be there. Fontini, always nice to see you. Um, uh, Maria, Renee Iber, nice to see you. Thank you for sharing the testimony that you sent me yesterday or the day before. It's always good after doing a meeting when people still send testimonies because sometimes it takes a few days for people to realize, well, God did something. And it's always good to, to see, to read. Marianne Anderson. Yeah, so good to see you. Uh, Tertia Stain. Hi there. Um, 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 Deirdre van der Waal. Siska van Deren is back from Holland. Nice to see you again, Siska. Vanessa Saliers. Yeah, sometimes the pause button is a distraction, but the Lord brings us back. So thankfully he does that. Definitely. Annaline Snayman, welcome to you. Um, I'm, I'm Rodine, I said hello to. I think Renee Edwards, I think I got everybody. Beatrice Isaacs, nice to see you. Sharnay uh, van Royen. Um, Rude, Vianca Wolfar, nice to see you. I don't think I've seen you for a while, Vianca. You're all so welcome. Thank you, Marianne Anderson. I love it when people. Type out the scriptures for other people. Um, I really, that break forth is very important in the season. Go and break forth and cry aloud. I know maybe some of you feel the way I did a while back. I wanted to just cry about everything. But God's saying, cry aloud. Come to me, call to me, and I will answer you. Um, Corin Hochfelden. So nice to see you. Corin Hochfelden, where are you from, if you're still watching? Um... So get ready for the sudden is Faye Morton from Australia. Yeah, nice to see you. I trust you are well, Faye Morton. Ruth Moore. Wow, Ruth Moore. I haven't seen you for years if you're still here. Um, okay, I think that's every Debbie Shackleton Pretorius, just as I get to it. Um, oh, Aretha, you with your mom. Please give her a big hug from me. Um I'm missing you ladies. So I'm going to let you go now. After all me scrolling through the names, I just feel it's important. It's it's polite. It's social media manners to greet people instead of just going, hi, because you gave up your time. So send me some comments. Tell me what today's message meant to you. And be on the lookout. I'll, I'll do a little graphic now with the Psalm 91 thing. And have a fantastic day. And I'll see you soon again. I had a good time preaching to myself today, so I trust that you received something today and you are encouraged. You're all beautiful. Remember, the, the, the bridegroom is ravished by your beauty. He has a purpose for you. Don't let the enemy lie to you and say that you have nothing going on in your life. God is busy in your life and he's preparing you for the suddenlies and for glorious days. So have a fantastic day and I will see you all soon again. Bye. Thanks for
for joining today's session. I hope you were equipped, empowered, and encouraged today by what you heard. Remember, you can find all the live video sessions that you may have missed on this page, on the Facebook page, Kathy Mole Ministries, or on YouTube, Kathy Mole on YouTube. You can also find all the other resources on kathymole.com. Thank you.